This is going to be a bit of a double intro, so brace yourselves, it's going to be a full-on video. It's going to be quite confusing and I'm really sorry, but this is what you get when you stack up a load of unfinished footage on your drive, but it's still relevant and you want to get it out there. So um, it's now September and I'm currently, like I'm recording this literally the day I'm going to upload this video. So that's cool, that's the easy part. Um, getting more complicated, between April the 14th and, uh, sorry, March the 14th and April the 11th, I recorded episode three of Long Lost Tech Treasures. So that is the bulk of what you're about to watch right now. Apart from a segment in the middle, and I announce it during the Tech Treasures, where you're going to see a vlog, a cut-down version of a vlog, that I filmed at that time, which was like an eBay selling vlog, because my plan back then was um, do the Tech Treasures, and then after the Tech Treasures series was complete, I was going to release a load of videos of me listing stuff on eBay and flogging all my stuff. Turns out that isn't very interesting, and I soon discovered that while importing the footage and watching a little bit of it. So I decided to... Um, crammed together all of that footage that I'd recorded and bung it in this video, so selling a few different things. Um, if that's something that you guys would like to see a little bit more of, I may try and find a way of working it into something a little bit more interesting, but that content on its own, on its own just completely sucks because it's really boring and putting stuff on eBay is kind of a tedious task, so I'm not in the best of moods when I'm doing it, you know, it's kind of just like, oh god, totally repetitive, just same thing over and over again, so very difficult to make a video out of. Anyway, um, so you're gonna see that. This is the third and final episode of Long Lost Tech Treasures. I'm not completely finished at Mum and Dad's house, but as you'll see in the video, it's pretty much finished. I'll talk to you guys at the end anyway, because I've got to film an outro. Um, and again, another thing in this video, actually, um, it was a bit of a difficult time around March, April. Um, I explained a little bit in the video, but it's still very fresh, so I wasn't sure how much I wanted to say on camera, but I'm happy to say afterwards now that during this time, Arlo had a hernia, and what was happening, the hernia was um, popping out, and constantly, all the time, for weeks on end, we were just back and forth to the hospital with him. So I'd be in work or whatever, and, or we'd be out somewhere, and then we'd have this sort of semi-emergency where it would pop out and we couldn't get it back in. And if that happens, you have to take them into hospital. Um, so we were just back and forth to A&E all the time. And then this one night, they couldn't get it in. So finally, because we were on a waiting list for an operation, finally, finally, after all of that, um, we got ambulanced to Cardiff and they did it within a couple of days of being in Cardiff. So that was all the stress that I was talking about. I'm kind of, I'm not down in the dumps. It's not all doom and gloom in this video, but you could tell I was very in a very stressed part of my life there because I was so worried about Arlo. But um, yeah, afterwards, you know, the operation was done and everything and I was very happy. We received fantastic care from the Noah's Ark Children's Hospital in Cardiff. It was wonderful and um, yeah, just, you know, if anyone happens to be watching that has anything to do with that place whatsoever, thank you so much. It was incredible. Um, so yeah, that explains all of the uh, sort of weirdness in the middle of the video. Yeah, as I say, I'll talk to you guys at the end in, a, in an outro, but hopefully you enjoy this vid. It's a few months outdated now, but you'll get the general gist. What is up, everyone? Welcome to episode three. So... I kind of imagined this series as a three-parter. Um, at least at the end of the last episode, I was like, yeah, one more part should do it. But there have been a couple of developments, and today's episode is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more interesting, maybe, I don't know. Um, Mum and Dad are currently away. I think they're back later on today. Um, I don't have any kind of substantial transport home today. Basically, in part one and two, what was happening was... Dad was transporting me back, and uh, he's got a massive boot, so I could get loads of stuff in, as you guys saw, and um, yeah, get it, get it all up into the attic. Today's format is going to be slightly different. We're going to do a lot of clearing, we're going to pack a lot of boxes, but I'm not going to take a lot back. 
Um, it's about half past nine. Jess is going to come and get me at about half past eleven. We're going to collect Eli from school because he's still on half days. I can pop a couple of things in the car, but we're going to have both kids, so we won't be able to get loads and loads of stuff in the car. Um, but yeah, it's not about that. It's more about getting progress with clearing out. So, yeah, let's just sort of walk and talk. Um, I can kind of, instead of explaining everything right at the beginning, I can just kind of talk to you guys properly um, as we're going. So, mum and dad are away, uh, so it's kind of weird coming, you know, with without them here. They've been away for a couple of days, so coming into, you know, an empty, quiet, cold house is kind of strange. Um, but anyway, I've brought some boxes with me, so I've actually remembered to return the crates from the previous episode. So we've got three big crates, and what we'll do really quickly is we'll nip upstairs, but you guys will probably be intrigued to hear that the focus of today's episode is not going to be up here. Um, as you saw at the end of episode two, we made really good progress in this room. And I am pretty chuffed with the progress that we made. So, you know, not incredible. There's still a lot of stuff here, but this is great. This is manageable now. This is a manageable space. So, chuffed to bits with this. Um, yeah, great stuff. When it comes to taking photos of my drum kit, selling it, plenty of space to do it all up here. So, brilliant. We're going to turn the light off and we are actually going to go down into IMNCHQ Mark 1. Now, to be fair, I kind of started in the wrong place. My mum did tell me that her sort of main mission was to decorate and um, renovate my old bedroom, IMNCHQ Mark 1. And then I came up and I did two massive clearing sessions, as you guys know, and I did them up in the studio, um, a room that they're not thinking of decorating or repurposing for quite some time, as far as I know. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of a kind of backwards move on my part. I started in the wrong room, but it's not as bad as you may think. I actually did a couple of quite significant clearing sessions before even thinking about this video idea you know, ages and ages ago. In fact, in my brother's old room here, there are four or five big cardboard boxes of stuff that's come out of this room. So that's stuff that I need to move home as well. I guess that will be shown in the next part. Um, but let's take a look at what you guys want to see, and that is IMNCHQ Mark I. Oh, check it out, guys. Apple sticker still on the door. <laughs> so here it is. Yeah, there are kind of echoes of me remaining. So that Maltese stand that's now been in the family for, gosh, I don't know, 15, 20 years, I guess. That's still there. Um, yeah, and this portion of my desk is still intact, along with a few of my things. Um, two of the three drawers are empty. That chest of drawers was mine. Um, tape deck, few possessions of mine, but really, you know, minimal, minimal stuff. Um, not that much at all. So what I want to get done today is I have this top cupboard, as you can see, bottom cupboard is pretty much clear. Um, I've got this cupboard that is not full of stuff, but there's definitely stuff in it. So I want to pack all of this away. Uh, it's just kind of this, you know, <laughs> again, bits and bobs random bits and bobs from God knows what. So in case you guys are wondering about the, the use of the room, I guess, um, mum and dad actually deal in vintage stuff and antiques. So yeah, that's why you see some um, some things dotted around here. You know, that's their, that's their business, that's what they do. So it's handy to have a little bit of extra storage. Um, and I think my mum's plan is to basically decorate the room. Obviously, you know, all of my stuff has left several gaping holes in the wall and whatnot. Um, decorate the room and then use it as a nice double guest room, which will be a really nice use for it because it's, it's such a big and lovely room. Um, my TV is down there, my retro TV, that'll be going into the attic. You know, it's still weird coming back. I've kind of got used to it now. 
first couple of times was definitely strange, but as you can see, I've spent quite a lot of time in here. I can't remember how much of this room I did show in the moving process, so I don't know if you guys saw how it was left when I'd officially moved and taken the initial stuff that I wanted to take, um, but there was still quite a lot that needed to be done. So actually, I'm gonna see if I can show you guys the stuff in my brother's room because it'll give you an idea of you know, the, the kind of stuff that it is. Yeah, so basically everything here, give or take, uh, on this bed is mine uh, to take back. And a lot of it is just random junk. So um, this is the contents of one of the drawers. You know, we got random cables. These are like cheapo braided iPhone lightning cables that never worked. Um, I just don't know, look, travel adapter. Hey, do you know something really comical? Um, when I chopped that plug, that US plug, off the end of that iMac cable, people were trying to educate me in the comments about what travel adapters were and what, you know, plug adapters were and things. You know, I, I couldn't get over that. I was like, yeah, I don't have one to hand. That's why I'm hacking up the cable, you know? Would people rather me wait, you know, two or three days and do the video much later? I just didn't get that. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's just all sorts of random junk. Um, What's under here? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, look, PowerBook G3. A lot of people have been asking about where that is. It's not crazy. There's some PC games, some boxes. Yeah. It it it's all it's all fine. I'm not going to beat around the bush. My kind of justification tone with all of this is annoying. Um, but what I'm trying to do is inspire myself to turn this into a much larger scale thing. Like, if, if we just have a tiny chat for two seconds. At the moment, I am completely bogged down in stuff. I'm behind at work, I'm behind at home, I'm behind with everything. And also, I want to make more money, slash I need to make more money. So, all of this, crap. I just want to get sorted because it is such a weight on my shoulders. I need to sell loads of it, if not all of it that I can sell, rake in some cash and just sort my life out. Right now, I feel that I'm in limbo until I can sort this stuff. That's how bad it is. And in one way, starting the process has really helped because it's progress. I keep using the P word, progress, it's great. But on the other hand, it's made me realise just how kind of time-consuming and difficult this whole thing is going to be, trying to get all this stuff organised and tested and sold and, you know, sent out and all that, you know, how much, how much effort and time it's going to take. So what, what had happened, I'd kind of shoved it to the back of my mind and forgotten about it and kind of my brain pretended it didn't exist, but now I've opened all that up again, which is a good thing, you know, because you can't go on pretending it doesn't exist forever. So, yeah, I don't know. I just hope, I just really, really hope I can get it sorted. It's such a weird feeling to describe, but it's all my own fault. It really is my own fault. I had so many opportunities growing up to slim down this stuff. And hey, you know, don't get me wrong. I was looking over my sold eBay items on my account. And that's just since I was 18. I sold a lot of stuff on my parents' account before I was 18. And I've sold a shed load of stuff. I've got rid of so much stuff, and if you look at old videos, the stuff that I don't have anymore, it's not like I stood still and kept everything. It's just the sheer quantity of stuff coming in was colossal. Um, but I was pretty bad at clearing out junk and, and rubbish. You know, those cables, why didn't I just throw those cables away, you know? Anyway, let's tackle this top cupboard because I'm not gonna get anything done if I just keep talking to you guys. This is procrastination, I think. This is why it's absolutely golden to do this. I've just found an original Game Boy in a nice case here with compartments. Uh, Tetris, absolutely wonderful. Just found a Game Gear, had no idea I had. It's faulty, I remember that much. Um, but, you know, absolutely awesome. And then this, a Video Sport 800 color electronic uh, color TV game. This is pretty much identical or very, very similar to the TV game that my grandparents had when we were all absolutely tiny. Um, it dates right, right back to, I think even 
yeah, when when my mum and her siblings were younger, I believe, um, or growing up or whatever, I have to ask her about it because she will remember. Um, and we used to play it at my grandparents' house years and years and years ago. I've got extremely vague memories about it. This is one that's been bought since at a car boot sale or whatever. Um, at various models of these colour TV games hanging around. I mean, there's millions of them out there, millions of different kinds. Um, but this particular design with the dial in the middle, that's one that I remember. The treasures certainly continue. I have found a Commodore tape deck, a Gravis gamepad, a Commodore Plus 4, which has quite a nice feeling keyboard. Uh, the Haynes How to Build Your Own Computer Manual from 2000 and... Don't know, 2000 and... I don't know, one, two maybe at a push. There's a date on there somewhere. A um, few different things. Here's a box for that power pack that Christian gave me. Um, what else do we have? What else, what else, what else, what else? Sega Mega Drive three button arcade stick, very substantial bit of kit, quite nice. A few different things in here, a um, lot of plug and play systems, little Atari, um, this is a plug and play Atari joystick, Super Nintendo Game Genie, uh, more joysticks, there's a couple of those Namco arcade sticks uh, down here as well, these are really cool. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was this, this very innocent looking black folder is my school progress file and they made such a fuss I can't show the front you know it's got logos and, and addresses on it and stuff can't really show anything inside either it's all covered in personal details obviously um, yeah they made a huge fuss about this in school for the last two years of school it was like progress file progress file progress file you know this that and the other blah 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 and um, <laughs> it's crazy I've never even looked at it since leaving school and I'd completely forgotten it existed uh, but looking back on it and I remember we all thought it was complete b rubbish at the time um, looking back it's quite nice actually they would kind of if you were involved in something extracurricular or if you did any kind of helping out or anything extra the school would actually write you up a little certificate and kind of like a thank you letter so a thank you letter on one side that would get addressed to your parents and say what you'd done and then a certificate on the other side that you could keep in your file. And I've got all sorts in there. I've got pages and pages of stuff, because obviously I, I, I just inserted myself into the center of anything technical that was happening. So I've got thank yous for like editing different videos. It reminded me that we did this project about litter around the school and we made a video about it. And the BBC actually came in and, um, and took the video and they put it out, I think, on um, I don't think it was BBC Wales, I think it was S4C. They put it out as like a project. Jack and I worked on that together. I remember being fascinated. They showed up with a broadcast van and stuff and um, MacBook Pros and you know all the kit. You know, it was great. Um, and then a couple of other little things, you know, a lot of video stuff in there. I've forgotten how much video stuff I did for the school. Um, I edited back in 2009 and I really don't know how I had the knowledge to even do it. Um, I edited the full length um, there was multiple cameras used as well. Um, performance of the school's play that year, which was High School Musical. God. Um, yeah, and a lot of stuff about lighting and sound and technical assistance during assemblies and all of that stuff. So quite nice to look back on, really. This is a million times tougher than what we've been doing upstairs. I've got no progress. Look at... Everything I've packed is just nothing. Uh, I've done all these cassettes for this Commodore, um, but it's hardly anything. I just keep finding stuff. I've just been sifting through a couple of folders and notebooks and things. And you know what, folks? Oh, man. Something that I wish I never did was, like, anything remotely... Um, oh, I don't know. What, what, what to even call it? Basically, that cupboard, I just used to throw stuff up there. Looks like I finished school, got all of the associated notebooks, paperwork, files, folders, shoved them up there. And that's where they've been ever since. So I'm reading some quite weird stuff. Um, obviously I went through school with this eye condition, so, uh, you know, well, various eye conditions, and I'm finding folders about it and assessments and just 
weird crap that I'd forgotten all about. I'd forgotten that I used to do. Um, I'm finding letters written here from various support staff. Uh, there's this big hoo-ha that was done when I was in year 11 about leaving school and going to college and was I prepared enough with the vision and everything, you know? Jesus, I'd just forgotten about all of this stuff. Um, this cupboard really is a bit of a twat because it's just making me think a lot and it's really weird reading stuff in notebooks, you know, I actually thought I actually genuinely thought that I would be somewhere colossal, colossal by now. Really strange. So I've just been having one heck of a sift through some interesting stuff. There was this big box in that cupboard, um, this piece of software, Luna. Uh, haven't used it in years and years and years. Basically, when I was little, because of my eyesight, um, I was given computers and the first PC I was given properly, you know, to keep was one for school. So I was given a PC and it was, it ran 98. I must have been given it either in 98 or uh, in 1999 because, or did it run 95? Because it was very early on I received it. I was in reception class when I received it. And how old are you? Four? Five? So I don't know. Anyway, that was the PC. And then a few years after, I got one for home. They gave me one for home. And I got my own copy of the software, Luna, which is, um, at the time, I think the leading in uh, magnification software for Windows. You know, very, very powerful software to enlarge the whole interface, just like the built-in magnifier in, in Mac OS X these days. Um, I've just opened up the box and I've found all of not only the Luna stuff, including an audio CD manual and user guide, which is kind of fascinating because obviously this was for partially sighted and, and people that were very nearly blind. Um, so, you know, all audio CDs there with the manual, but much more interestingly than that, I found all of the old software and manuals and stuff for that PC. It was a Systemax PC, and I'll see if I can Google image Systemax, Systemax PCs and show you guys kind of roughly what mine looked like. Uh, the color monitor, I remember exactly what it looked like, uh, so I can put a picture of that up as well. And I got a printer, an old Epson printer, and an old scanner. All of the documentation for all of that is here as well, along with various other things. So they put a DVD burner in it for me. So here's the cover for that. Um, and I've got various discs. Um, <laughs> check this out. A free Epson's exclusive Robbie Williams image CD. <laughs> Ah, uh, you couldn't make this stuff up. You really, really couldn't. Virus scan. By, by the dates on all this stuff, I got the PC in around 2002, by the looks of it. Um, as well, check this out. This is a sheet of keyboard stickers. And basically, they were big yellow stickers with bold black writing on them when I was learning to touch type. And that's one thing that I was taught. For anyone who's ever commented on my typing, um, Every single week for years and years and years in school, someone came in to teach me specifically how to touch type. So on a standard keyboard layout, I know where every single key is without looking, um, which was a claim, you know, you could, you could say that sound, and it sounded impressive 10 years ago, but now it's not, you know, everybody is a wizard on a keyboard now, but you know, I, I was blazing at 100 words per minute when I was still tiny, tiny. So, yeah, it's one skill that I'm really chuffed they taught me because of my eyesight condition, because I'm so at home on a keyboard, it is unreal. Um, yeah, I've just made a mess on the landing with all this crap that I've got to put away now. You know, <laughs> I do have another folder somewhere with much more fun stuff relating to this PC. They gave me a load of games as well. I don't know why. I really don't. Uh, Galaxy of Games collections, I remember. A um, few other sort of collections of, of games and stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's all somewhere. Here it is, folks. I have found 
the purchase date for this machine. 4th of the 2nd, 2002. And that's where it was purchased. Simply Computers. And there's the serial number. So yeah, pretty exciting. I was just getting ready to pack all this stuff away and this card slid out. <laughs> wow. Seven years ago. <laughs> Seven. Seventeen years ago. And I remember it. I remember it really well actually. Um, still remember the feel of the keyboard. Um, they gave me a complete set. Monitor. Keyboard. Mouse, speakers, scanner, printer. Yeah. <laughs> Bonkers. So I've crammed it all into two boxes. One, two, ready to go back at some point. Cupboard is empty, mission accomplished. So obviously I've had the initial kind of look over, uh, but it will need proper sorting. And then, you know, appropriately selling, slash whatever, you know the score by now, whatever I'm gonna do. Oh man, <laughs> at least that's another thing ticked off the list. That cupboard is completely empty. I emptied the wardrobe quite some time ago now, so that is empty. My room, that old room is nearly completely empty, so yeah. <laughs> so I had one spare box and I thought I'd come up here and just make a little start because I've got about half an hour left. And I found this little beauty. I love this machine. This is the Acorn Electron. Um, works in a very similar manner to the BBC Micro, but it's a much smaller system, much neater. Um, absolutely love it, love it, love it, love it. And over here, I have got all of its bits and bobs, look. And there was a time that I did plug this in and quite enjoy myself with it. Got its little tape drive. I believe this is the tape drive that goes with it. Yeah, Acorn computers. Yeah, and even manual. Nice, nice. Lovely, lovely system. I think I'll be clinging on to this as probably the one kind of retro machine that I keep. Retro in regards to these, you know. Um, 80s like micro computers um, although I've sold a lot in the past uh, but I've got that Commodore downstairs you know that can go never even booted it up um, but this guy I really really quite like him it's such a neat little machine uh, I think that's everything yeah everything related to that machine because is it just a standard video out I guess there's the power supply input and oh yeah just video out or whatever so sweet. Well, I'm about done with what I can do, realistically. Um, Jess will be here quite soon. So what I've decided to do, because I don't have that much footage and it's been a bit of a short kind of session, um, I'm just going to carry on. Next week when I come up, uh, I'm all set to come up next Thursday. So when I do come up, I will um, just carry on with this video. So yeah, looks like it could be a three-parter after all. I'm kind of dreading next week though because uh, it's getting harder and harder because there's less and less stuff, if that makes sense. So the stuff that's remaining is more difficult. So it has been quite a few weeks and I'm finally back to do a little bit more. Um, you guys have probably noticed that the really good progress I was making on the channel kind of ground to a halt. Uh, life got pretty manic and we had a little bit of a scary time with Arlo, uh, but he is absolutely fine now. We've been, we've had a little bit of a ride, to be perfectly honest. Uh, sometimes you're just flowing along in life and then you get hit with something and uh, makes things really difficult. But I'm not gonna bore you with any details in this video. I'll probably talk a little bit about it in a vlog or whatever. Still haven't really fully decided you know what I'm gonna do in relation to videos and vlogs and whatever I just don't know what's happening um, but what I do know is I'm here today and I'm going to try 
and do at least a little bit of progress because I haven't done anything for weeks and weeks. Um, not just because of, you know, what I was just discussing, but various things that have cropped up along the way. So let's try and get back on it. Um, by the way, as a few of you have probably seen, I have managed to begin eBay selling and I did record like an eBay vlog, eBay selling vlog. Um, so what I'll do is I'll insert some clips from that right now because I'm not going to make the vlog. It's too boring. Um, it really is not exciting enough. So I'm going to uh, insert a few clips and yeah, you guys can see some of the stuff that I sold. It's all sold on eBay. Um, all the stuff that I put on really happy so I'm gonna continue eBay listing um, I can now get back on that as well because I had to slow down there as well but yeah roll the bits of vlog that will never be a vlog it has been sat in that server rack doing absolutely nothing since I bought it this is the Mac mini 2011 from Dave uh, Geekanoids I bought it off him he basically messaged me if I remember uh, offering me a good deal on this Mac Mini. I said yes, because at the time I had some spare cash and I was able to just buy Macs and make videos, um, but I'm not in that position at the moment. So unfortunately, I kind of need to get shot of this guy. My plan was with the Mac Mini, um, I don't have another powerful Mac desktop. So if anything happened to my Hackintosh, then I could plug the Mac Mini in, use it on my main setup, and I'd still have a lovely desktop machine while I'd troubleshoot the Hackintosh or update it, upgrade it, whatever. But the fact of the, fact of the matter is, folks, I've got a Retina MacBook Pro. I use it constantly. And if anything did go wrong with the Hackintosh, which is extremely unlikely, then I'm more likely to use my MacBook Pro instead of going through the hassle of patching this into the main setup and getting it completely set up with all of my files and applications and passwords and all that sort of thing. It would be more effort than it's worth. I could use that time to troubleshoot the Hackintosh. Plus, the Hackintosh has been trouble free because I choose not to update it. So, um, yeah, I'm basically hanging on to a two, three hundred quid machine for the sake of it. Maybe three, four hundred quid. I don't know how much they go for, but I'm hanging on to it just in case. And that's stupid. As lovely of a machine as this is, it's absolutely gorgeous, and, and I'm, I'm the proud owner of it. Um, I got no, I've got no use for it, so it would be much better suited going to someone else. So here we are up in my attic, and you guys remember that I left a few things separate to sell last time. Just a couple of really easy things. Uh, whew, a bit out of breath. I just transported some more stuff up the attic from my office. Um, yeah, balanced patch bay. Nice bit of kit. Hoping to, um, I think these go for about 80 quid, brand new. So maybe 50 quid, something like that. That would be really sweet. So patch bay. And this little mystery, this um, Cisco router with power supply. So yeah, that'll be an intriguing one. We're gonna have to try and plug that in and kind of reset it to factory settings or something. Um, here we go. Everyone loves seeing this guy, the 2008 MacBook Pro. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're the two items we're bringing down from the attic and also the Mac Mini 2011 box. Sweet. There's one quick look at the attic. Um, not everything in here is to be sold. That's one thing to remember. Some stuff I'm just dumping up here out of the way uh, while I'm bringing more stuff in and out of the office, which is obviously going to take space. Um, you know, you can see like when I do my workbench finally, I'm going to get a bit of work top for my workbench, by the way, and I'll fit all those socket boxes properly and everything, hand those LED strip lights and stuff. It'll all be nice. Um, I think one thing I'm going to try and sell really soon is over there. Uh, you can't see it where I'm standing now, but over there I've got a compact desktop. It's about eight or nine years old, but I do have a matching keyboard and mouse, and I also have a monitor. Uh, well, I've got loads of spare monitors, so I'll make up a little PC bundle. Um, collection only, you know, 30, 40 quid. Little starter PC for someone, internet browsing. You know, pretty sweet deal. Um, hopefully that'll go. You know, maybe even offer postage if I can find suitable boxes and stuff. This little mini is currently on Sierra, so I'm installing High Sierra. It will not run Mojave, poor little thing. So, progress is pretty sweet, folks. I've got my patch bay on. A um, little bit rusty on eBay. The interface has changed a lot since I last listed stuff, but yeah, 
that is now on there. Little patch bay. Um, nice easy start. I'm still waiting for this Mac Mini to install. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, it's taking quite a while to install, bless it. It's getting hot as well. <laughs> um, there's quite a bit of dust in the bottom. I've just remembered as well when I opened it up on my video, um, there was a lot of dust. So what we'll do is we'll take the bottom off and blow that out prior to sending it. And of course, we'll test it after we do that as well. Um, so next up, I think what I'm going to do is take a look at resetting this Cisco router to factory settings. Uh, also look up the value of it and see what I can do there. Here we go, got some photos. Photos of it powered on, photos of the back, job done, lovely, lovely. Yeah, nice. I've just done something that I've been meaning to do for the longest time and that is list my Mackie Onyx 820i. So I've just done that, uh, pretty pleased. Got the mixer. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a spare Firewire 400 or 800 cable to include, so I've just included the 400 or 400, but, you know, they're readily available to purchase anyway, so, uh, yeah, various pictures. It's looking really nice, actually. I gave it a good wipe down. Uh, it was looking a bit dusty, but now it looks sweet. So, there it is, sitting there waiting to be sold patch bay waiting to be sold. So just waiting on this little Mac Mini and then we've had a really successful eBay listing day. So the Mac Mini is still sitting here. I did list it at quite a high price for 2011. So what I'll do is I'll sit on this for a short while and then I think I will drop the price. Maybe Monday. So it's Saturday today. Might be looking at dropping the price by about 20 quid on Monday just to see if that'll shift it. It's not that I want to sell it super quickly. It's more the fact that I just want to keep the flow going. Um, so I'm going to list some more stuff today and we will see how far we get. So we've got nothing that's going to really shake the earth in terms of price, but this is about clearing out and the accumulation of funds. So we've got this realistic vintage disco mix mixer I showed you guys. Um, you know, tenor if I'm lucky. Um, DK bongos, tenor if I'm lucky. Uh, LTO drive, maybe, you know, I don't know. I haven't looked at them in, a in ages, 40, 50 quid. Um, comes with a few of these, so yeah. And uh, Space Invaders plug and play TV game. Uh, you know, I don't know, Fiverr. So, yeah, just stuff to get rid of, and I've got my projector here, not selling that, it's just coming down for a different reason. Something that just suddenly dawned on me, all those laptops over there. Could I get away with flogging all of those in one bundle just to get them out of my hair? That might be easier, to be honest, because I don't have chargers for any of them. So, you know, no chargers. Begs the question really does beg the question can I just bung them all on maybe I'll do that next time big laptop bundle bundle of old faulty laptops some of them may not be faulty hmm I'll think about that so the plan today is firstly I'm going to unscrew these two items from the rack and then that only leaves the power supply so I'm going to use my mum's legendary flowery screwdriver that I absolutely love to get these guys out and then uh, pack them into the boxes. So I'm not going to focus too much up here today. I've just dismantled my keyboard stand, um, got the stuff out the rack and put in that box. It's looking kind of pretty much done up here now really, just a matter of taking stuff away. Um, but we're actually going to sort of put this room on pause because Downstairs is much more important. Now, I am conscious of weight in my attic, as well as just the general amount of stuff up there. It's going to be quite difficult soon to manoeuvre things, uh, to find things I'm looking for to sell and whatnot. So my plan is to clear downstairs my old bedroom and any... I take, I'll take a couple of bits home today. I'm going to take that PC, uh, the box for it and that sort of thing. But any massive amounts of stuff and I'll put it up here and then we'll retackle this in the future. So um, it may feel like stepping backwards but it's not because it's all going to be packed away neatly in crates and boxes and things. It'll just be 
kind of like a holding ground up here temporarily. So except for a broken money box, um, an empty can of air, and my Maltesers stand, display stand, this room is completely empty, which is great. Empty of my stuff. Uh, done my drawers, done those drawers. Cupboards are completely empty. So that's mission accomplished. Um, let's take a quick look upstairs. I'm glad that we're nearly done, I'm really glad. So obviously up here is now looking a little fuller because I've had to do a little bit of shifting around, but as you can see, it's just dribs and drabs left now. Real, real dribs and drabs, as well as some big drum kits and huge bits of equipment, but it'll get there. And I am feeling a million times better about it now. So we are done up here for today, and we're pretty much done for the series. Um, I may revisit this room in a vlog when I come back, to do stuff, but the bulk of it's done. The bulk of the clear out, most of that stuff is packed away in boxes. Anything that isn't is either rubbish or large items to be carried out um, when I've got the space to have them or sell them or whatever's gonna happen. So, yeah. Sweet. I thought this huge box of DVDs and videos might have been mine, but luckily it's not, so that's good. <laughs> I've already got all of mine back at home. I was kind of dreading if they were mine, but I kind of knew that I had all of mine. I, I would have been very worried if I had this lot as well, because that would have meant I've got some kind of problem. So there you have it guys, that is the end of part three. Thank you for sticking with me throughout all of this. And of course, that is the end of the Tech Treasures series. I mean, we've got a few things left at Mum and Dad's, but they're just sort of big items. You know, the clearing part is done, or at least the transportation, the packing and the transportation. As for the organisation, that's all going to be done this end. The, the original plan, when I moved out, my original plan was to kind of cherry pick things and uh, organise stuff at that end, but that would have been impossible because it is going to take me days and days and days to do it. So at the moment, I'm just gonna drag the odd thing down from the attic, and when I get time, just flog it. I managed to sell about 10 items or so on eBay before all of the summer craziness kicked in. So 10 items is certainly not bad. Um, however, it hasn't made a dent in up there. In fact, up there for some reason looks worse because I've been digging through stuff and throwing stuff around. So yeah, it's horrendous, and I'm not gonna show it on camera for a very long time. Same goes for this room, because I'm embarrassed. I am embarrassed, I'm behind, I'm embarrassed. It's not good, it is not good. But I've got some stuff in the pipeline, so that's gonna force me soon to um, clear this office out. And I've got some very large, bulky things in here that I'm gonna be taking to work next week. So that'd be great, bring it on. So thank you so much for watching, everyone. Like I said, thank you for sticking with me. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.